Hello everybody. We're back again. It's been a while. So, today we're going to discuss siege damage. And more specifically, we're going to go over some of the best ships, aircraft strategies, and loadouts for when all you really want to do is blow up somebody's base. Or outpost. Or mining platform. You know. So, to that end, we'll go ahead and open up the blueprints here. Now, this might look a little different to some of you guys. The developers did just completely change all this up. Um, so, if you are coming from some of my older videos, have no fear. This information and my older information is all still relevant. They've just changed the look of things. So, to start off, what is siege damage? Well, as I mentioned in a previous video, Siege damage is one of the three types of damage dealt by a player's ship. Unlike anti-ship damage and air defense damage, siege damage only works versus structures. So that is NPC bases, cities, uh, player bases, outposts, mining platforms, etc. This damage is the damage that is actually being dealt by your ship or aircraft when you are attacking the structure. Not the defensive fleets guarding the structure or anything like that, just the structure. And as you will note from this example, the damage difference is massive on most ships. So here we have a aircraft type KCCP. It doesn't do a lot of any kind of damage, least of all siege damage. However, the reason why we are looking at the KCCP is because it is an aircraft carrier and it is capable of using large aircraft so if we come down here no wait where is that at i don't remember is it in the loading system yeah here we go can carry large fighters two of them to be exact the kccp has a bunch of upgrades that all have to do with dealing damage this is one of the ships that I strongly recommend you use for sieging if you have a very specific fighter to go with it. That fighter is the VTOS B, or the BTOS. The VTOS B is a bomber, which means it does a lot of damage to both ships and structures and nothing else. It also has some stealth, but for this video, we're not going to discuss that. We are going to focus instead on the damage. We'll be coming back to the ship in a moment, but let's finish off talking about the KCCP. Now, if you are going to siege and you have both the KCCP and the VTOS B, these are what I recommend. They have, this ship has a very high cruising speed, 650, which is extremely fast for a cruiser. For reference, this Taurus destroyer has the exact same speed and warp speed as that cruiser. Or, to put it another way, another cruiser that is commonly used, the Callisto, is incredibly slow in comparison, almost 30% slower. It's a lot of speed. Or, for those of you who like faster ones, you have the Io, which also has this high speed. Some of these ships, this is more of a baseline. So speed is very good for sieges because it means that you can get to your target, to your enemy base, to your enemy city, to your enemy outpost, which is most, most of the time what people will be striking is outposts and mining platforms. And you can get there very quickly before the enemy has a chance to react and stop you. So speed is king. Now, the light aircraft carrier, cruiser rather, um, has a bonus to siege damage. When fully upgraded, this will increase the siege damage of the aircraft that you put into it by 15%. So we will be taking that upgrade. We also have not one, not two, but three 10 or 2.5% damage dealt upgrades. These are generic damage, which means they apply to both or to ship, air, and siege. We will be picking up at least one of those, but really two of those. 
Um, there is an argument to be made for picking up the hit rate, but if you are making a purely dedicated siege fleet, hit rate does not matter. Do not take hit rate if you're making a dedicated siege fleet. Um, and then finally, we will also be picking up the rearmament acceleration bonus for a nice 20% reduction in the flight time and the primary weapon cooldown of the aircraft. Now, I have recently learned something that I did not know before. Cooldown on aircraft is not like cooldown on ships. On a ship, the cooldown simply is how long before it fires again. On an aircraft, however, the cooldown is actually how long it takes for this thing to reload inside of the carrier when it goes back to it, which makes no sense, but it, that's what it is. Instead, what you want for aircraft is you want duration. Because the way it works is the ship deals damage over its duration. So here we are at the VTOS B. We see that it does 1,900 siege damage at the moment. And it does that damage by attacking one time. And then 10 seconds later, it flies back to its carrier, reloads for four seconds, and then it comes back out again and does it all over. There is a lock time as well. So reducing lock time can improve your effective siege DPM. This is kind of a personal preference thing. If you are going to get lock time, make sure of course you pick it up in the propulsion system. I have not picked these up yet because I don't have the tech points spare just yet. We're working on it. Now, with the upgrades from that KCCP, which can carry two of these, by the way, we see we will see that our 1900 damage per weapon would actually go up by 15% from the Siege and a further 20% from the generic damage bonuses. So that means the total damage of this aircraft, which is currently 3800, would in fact climb to over 5,000 siege damage. It's pretty good. Um, for this, we are going to take both of the plasma damage, which are good for both ship and siege, which is all this does. We're going to take both of the siege damage upgrades. Now, the only reason to take these is if you're doing siege. If you're not doing siege, do not take them. Instead, take the hit rate versus cruiser and the uh, increased evasion strategy. But for siege, best in slot. Then we will take both of the weapon system cooldowns. Again, doesn't work the way that people think it works, but still useful. It still reduces the time spent not dealing damage. And finally, crit. 30% chance to do just deal an extra 50% damage. Totally worth it. So these will make up the core damage dealing of our siege fleet. You will have 10 VTOS B bombers carried within 5 KCCP light attack cruisers. Or aircraft cruisers, sorry. Now, these aircraft cruisers will not be actually in your primary siege fleet. Instead, they will be used as reinforcements. And we'll get to that in a minute. Instead, what will be in your main siege fleet are AC-721 aircraft type, the type D. You will have 10 of these if you have good siege damage corvettes. I do. I have the S9 Levy and the Cellular Defender. Just like with the VTOS B, for the Cellular Defender and the S9 Levy, you want to pick up the cooldown. You want to pick up the damage. For the Cellular Defender, you want to pick up the crit. The flat damage is good, and you can take it over the hit rate. This was set up for PvP, so I still have the hit rate instead of the flat damage. I will change this out. I just have not done it yet. Uh, the reduces interception does not matter if you're hitting a base. And again, the hit rate does not matter if you're hitting a base. So, you will take those damage upgrades. The rapid fire battery does not matter. If you're hitting a base, it doesn't do anything for you. You can ignore it. 
Propulsion. The evasion doesn't really matter, but you can take it. Otherwise, you can take both of the target selections so that your weapons lock on faster, and you can start doing your siege damage faster. This thing has an 8 second lock time, but if you were to take both of the lock on time reductions, which is 30% each, that'll drop to like a 4, 3 and change second lock time, which is much, much better. Armor doesn't really matter, but feel free to take hit rate or a chance to dodge missiles and HP. Again, for attacking a city, does not matter. In order of importance for sieging, maxing out your torpedo system, then your propulsion system, then you can put points into the cannon, and then finally the armor. For the S9 levy, it is almost exactly the same. You will put points into the damage. You will put points into the crit. You do not need the hit rate. Again, I have it only because of PvP. Instead, you will take the cooldown. Do not worry about armor penetration unless you are attacking a player base. If you're attacking an outpost or a amp or something like that, the armor penetration does nothing for you. But if you're attacking a player base, player bases can have armor. So, technically speaking, this will give you a little bit more damage. You can once again take the target selection here. I don't. I would recommend taking just all the damage things. Get rid of the hit rates. Pick up the double damage. You can choose to also uh, skip out on one of the cooldowns and pick up the target selection if you want. In propulsion, BAT, um... And then the flight time. And that's basically it. Just those two are the only two that really matter. This doesn't have a secondary weapon. Armor system, just take HP. And you will load them into your AC721. In the AC721, you will pick up damage. You will pick up the flight time. You'll pick up the target lock, which can lower your target lock for your aircraft even further. With this and the lock-on of the sh reduction from the ship itself, you can get the lock-on to these things to be darn near instant, which is fantastic. It means that the moment that they get into range, they will start doing their damage, shortening that duration for how long it takes to kill a structure. The faster you kill a structure, the faster you can get to the next one, or get away from the defenders when they come to try and stop you. Hit and run. Um, you can also take the reduced chance of being hit by guided weapons. I do not know how useful this is. I do not know exactly whether or not outposts do direct fire or missile-based defense damage. I think it is missile-based because I believe I've had back row ships like my Xeno Stingers get hit by the defenses. So this could come in handy, but do not quote me on that. I do not have enough information to know that to be true. Moving on from the AC721, you'll have 10 of these. You will also want to probably have some Noma and Mare Nubiums. The Mare Nubium, lovingly called the Toilet by most players, is a pretty lousy ship, unless you're sieging. The Mare Nubium has a bunch of upgrades that can be used to increase the siege damage, flight time of your siege damage UAV, and then the actual damage generically of the UAV. All told, you can get this up to around 3,000 siege damage. There is nothing worth getting in propulsion. You're already faster than everything else in your fleet. There is nothing really worth getting in the armor except for some flat HP if you just want to resist the incoming damage. However, the missile support system, despite being a pretty useless weapon, has a hidden strategy in it. This strategy is fantastic. It grants a 35% increase in the cooldown of the missile system, so you shoot less often with your missiles. Not a big deal. But it grants the Siege UAV a 30% chance to deal 100% extra damage. So when that procs the siege uav is in not is in fact doing if i can click on it here is in fact doing instead of 831 damage to the structure it is going to be doing 1600 
damage to the structure. And yes, it can damage the command system of a base. Not that that matters, because it can't do uh, ship damage, only base damage. So, definitely recommend picking up that missile support bonus when you can. Same holds true for the Noma. You will be picking up the double siege damage, you'll pick up the flight time, and you'll pick up the flat damage. This should increase the damage of your siege UAV by a significant margin. And then down in the generic battery section, you will pick up the target confirmation, which has the exact same effect. The other bonuses in here do not really matter. You do not have any actual ship damage to speak of. So don't even worry about it. Uh, armor system, just HP, propulsion, does not matter. These are all very cheap ships. The Noma is pretty much a default ship. Marinubium you're also very likely to have. The AC-721 you will have. So just getting good Corvettes to go with it. The KCCP aircraft you will have. So getting the VTOS B. And you now have a core of ships that can deal a lot of siege damage. Fully upgraded. A fleet made up of these ships could do 100,000 siege damage, or close to it. Next up, the Xeno Stinger, one of my personal favorite ships. Now, the Xeno Stinger, which I'm going to go ahead and upgrade for you all here, has a damage bonus, which we'll pick up, flight time, which we'll pick up, another flight time, which we will pick up, and then either picking up the prioritized targets if you're going to actually be fighting players with super capitals, which you shouldn't, but if you do. Or you then go with the final damage upgrade and then the lock-on speed. The lock-on speed is particularly handy if you are going to be dealing with uh, smaller targets like enemy defending ships that are small ships reducing this lock-on time by a significant margin. Which matters a lot because you kill the ship, then you have to wait to kill the next ship. Now, as you can see here, this thing does 2,000 siege damage, but it only costs 6 points, same as the Noma. So, it's not as much siege damage as the Noma, and when you look at it, if you look in the weapon system, it doesn't even say it does the siege damage, which is clearly a bug. But it does. It does a lot. There are no special bonuses in the weapon that matter. No point in getting armor or propulsion upgrades really. Just make sure you have the UAV maxed out. Moving on from the Xeno Stinger. Another powerful ship to have in your fleet are the Taurus. Specifically the Taurus Type B. Taurus Type B has two generic damage increases one goes for the main pulse cannon the other one's for cooldown and then it has a uh, just generic 15% damage bonus built in the triple fire cannon here is your primary source of siege damage it is of course affected by the upgrades from the energy system and everywhere else the upgrades that you will put on this ship Double damage, double cooldown. Now again, this is a ship-based weapon system, not a UAV or aircraft, so this is just direct rate of fire, basically, cooldown. Um, and then the one set of siege damage. Doing that will bring this up in damage on par with or better than your AC-721s with their, uh, with their siege aircraft inside. Um, once again, just like with the other aircraft, these do a lot of anti-ship damage, so this means if the enemy does actually attack your siege fleet, you can stand and fight if you need to, if it's a fight you think you can win, because all told, this fleet will put out somewhere in the neighborhood of 500,000, 400 to 500,000 anti-ship damage, which is usually enough to beat down uh, bigger targets. So fleets with... Uh, 
carriers in them and stuff like that. The bombers, the cellular defenders, the xeno stingers, they all prioritize carriers, so they will inflict heavy damage to them. While also being relatively cheap. This this is a relatively cheap fleet. You can include the offensive Taurus here, like I have. You can use it for its evasion and have it be a front row kind of throwaway evasion ship to defend. Um, this is CP intensive, so it's it's kind of up to you. Alternatively, you can take the more static approach and throw a couple Noma support, or a Ceres support rather, Noma support as well, into your fleet. Doing this will allow your fleet to recover the damage that's being dealt by the city and thus improve the longevity of your siege fleet if you're hitting multiple targets in a row. Of course, once combat ends, the damage that was dealt remains and becomes permanent damage unless you send repair tokens with the, the fleet. I highly recommend that you do send repair tokens with the fleet. Um, but if you do not want to send repair tokens, sending a couple series with will help keep your fleet topped off during combat and allow you to hit multiple at once. Last, but certainly not least, we have the Mare Serentatus, the Mare A, uh, or Mare S Type A. The Mare S has a wonderful torpedo system. As you can see here, it does 2,000 anti er, siege damage, also does heavy anti-ship damage that also prioritizes carriers. So again, if your opponent tries to respond with some big, huge, heavy, slow fleet and you get stuck into fighting them, you will very likely do a lot of damage to that big ship. In some instances, I have actually killed one or two of my enemies' super capitals before they realized that that is what my fleet was. A lot of people think if you're attacking a amp or something like that, you're using a throwaway fleet. And in a sense, you are. But this throwaway fleet has fangs. Now, with the upgrades, just like with the other ones, you will be taking the siege damage, double missile damage, or torpedo damage in this case, and double cooldown. The last slot here, you can get the concentrate fire. It does work, and it will make you do more anti or er, siege damage. Just don't have the tech points for it here, so that's up to you. Alternatively, you can choose to get the crit. I don't think the crit is worth it. I think you are actually better off with the just generically good every 90 seconds you're going to deal basically five times your siege damage because you're firing five times as fast. The idea is you want to kill a structure quickly. Um, so what should wind up happening with your fleet is your siege damage should be so high that you can kill a structure in about two minutes or less. If you can kill a fleet in two minutes or less, this will only activate once, but that is fine, and it will just burst down that structure. So that about wraps it up for the various siege ships that you will use. Um, there are other ships that are also really good. I do not have them, unfortunately. Um, one ship that is really, really good for doing siege damage I do have the Callisto. The problem with the Callisto is it is 20 C point or er, command points, and while it does do a very impressive amount of siege damage and have a very large amount of upgrades, those upgrades center around crit and dealing damage to big targets. There is no siege upgrades, and worst of all, it is super slow. So. The Callisto is good for hitting a player's base where you know that they're not going to go anywhere necessarily and you know big big war type situations that's probably about it the jaeger and the predator they both work really well for carrying your aircraft but again speed being king i would rather have my ac721 field 10 of them instead of five jaegers even if the Jaeger does have slightly more advantageous bonuses. Barely. Um, but the real winner is the cap or the IO. The IO has three variants. 
The Type B is a good evasion bonus ship. Very good for PvP. Good at hitting small ships. It's just good. Not good at siege damage. The Type A is fairly good at doing siege damage. It does not have any evasion bonuses or anything special. Um, it just hits things really, really hard. You see here, it's energy damage. You have a strategy which gives you even more energy damage. You have two damage bonuses, two cooldown bonuses. Um, the rest of these don't really matter. But um, the real winner, the best one, is the Type C. I do not own the Type C. However, I can show it to you. Go to Jupiter Industries here. And oh, not the Plasma Konamara. The IO. The IO Siege, as you can see, hits like a truck. 12,000 siege damage. It also has the evasion and hit rate bonus in its engine, meaning that this thing can hit bases and not really get hit back that much. 30% evasion is nothing to scoff at. You also have uh, this strategy here, causing you to um, fire three extra times per weapon cycle and increasing the duration so it hits more often but it hits um, with a longer duration you have double damage double cooldowns so all the generic things you had before and double siege now again i don't own this version yet unfortunately so i don't know the exact details um but i have been told that this thing can get up to an effective DPM of around 30,000 for Siege. You can field eight of these. So this is the absolute king of destroying bases and amps and things like that. Um, as I also pointed out, you have the Kunamara Chaos, the Plasma version. It's decent too, does some decent Siege damage. You have the uh, Callisto's version variant, the Heavy Torpedo Callisto. This is just a fantastic ship, period. Um, but they're all slow. Slow, slow, slow. Um, the Heavy UAV does not, in my opinion, warrant use. Yeah, it does anti-air stuff, but whoop de do. So that about wraps it up for... Uh, siege damage and what I personally use and what I recommend use for sieges. Destroyer and down for the fleet. Upgrade them. Give them some um, cruisers as reinforcement. Particularly good if you can get yourself on a nice plus four like I am. So you can send nine reinforcements. Full eight of the uh, uh, siege IOs. Which would just absolutely obliterate things. This is my current siege fleet. It is still being built. As you can see, I have the Mare S's right now. I'm actually going to remove them temporarily. So slow to click on them because it's removing things that I'm not telling it to remove. All right, Taurus Assaults, the Nomas, We have 100,000 siege fire right now. Then we will have, as soon as they are complete, the 5k CCP. We've already got the five VTOS Bs. So as soon as these are done, in maybe four hours, I'll speed them up and get them out quickly. Then we will add in more damage and bring this fleet up to just around 200,000 siege when I have everything in here and upgraded of course and around 500,000 anti-ship the siege fleet moves pretty quickly as you can see we have 650 travel speed 
when you have your fleet fully upgraded for dealing damage then you want to actually spend your points on the propulsion system of your slowest ships get those ships up in speed so for example the Taurus is here upgrade their cruise speed upgrade their warp speed um, get them up and then of course your IO as well if you reinforce with IOs get them up in warp speed and, and cruise speed doing that this fleet very easily will move as fast as any destroyer fleet faster than fleets that use Tauruses much faster than enemy fleets using cruisers or big ships this will allow you to evade those sh those fleets get in strike your target and get out now one final tidbit something that I find personally to be very useful instead of sending these siege fleets from your base instead build an outpost build an outpost and in that outpost deploy your siege fleet um, if you're gonna send more than one fleet use the outpost for your primary siege fleet and then transfer your secondary siege fleet or PVP fleet or whatever it is you're escorting it with transfer that to the outpost if you do this when you go to attack an enemy base and uh, when you are done attacking or if you have to retreat or whatever the fleets will come back to this outpost if it's a sub fleet it'll come back here no matter what if it is not a sub fleet and it is just simply one that you are uh, escorting it with then it will retreat to the outpost first and then to your base if you tell it to this means that you can hide where your base is located to prevent retaliation and make your job of harassing your enemies and destroying their stuff a lot easier. Well, I hope you all found that very informative. Thanks so much for watching. If you have questions about subfleets or any other video, I have a whole series. Feel free to check that out. Leave comments. I respond to all comments. If you ask a question and I know the answer, I'll be more than happy to share it with you. And even if I don't know the answer, I will try and find the answer to get it to you. Have a good day and thanks so much for watching.